Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me thank very much the Taiwan uh, Visitors Association for inviting us to take part in this forum, and especially Ms. Ye and all her team. Last but not least, I also would like to thank you very much the Chamber of Commerce of Spain in Taiwan for being in this project as well. It's a big honor uh, to be here and to share our experiences with you. We are involved in one of the most dynamic economical industries worldwide, with big effects in the main macroeconomic figures, GDP, employment, and territorial development, among others. But, we, but let me underline one important figure. According to UNWTO, United Nations World Tourism Organization, in, two, in 2016, we had 1.2 billion international arrivals. And in 2030, we will have reached 1.8 billion international arrivals. In short, in 13 years, we will increase in average the number of international tourists in our destinations by 50%. Can you imagine your city, your destination with 50% more activity? If we consider the air traffic industry, figures are also amazing. More than 3 billion people traveling by air in 2016. And if we consider the forecast, figures are impressive. 4.8 billion passengers in 2035, in 20 years, of which 73% from emerging <coughs> countries. As you know, as you probably know, Europe is the main tourist destination in the world. But as you can see on the slide, and according to WTO again, Europe is losing market share worldwide. And the regions that increase their market share are Africa, and especially in absolute terms, Asia Pacific region. And this is very relevant for Europe, and I suppose for Asia too. If we look more accurately to the figures according to the distribution of population by class, we can also see that the biggest increase in the middle class is taking place in Asia Pacific. And that is good news for everybody, for you, of course, but also for all destinations worldwide. There are several important reasons for this phenomenon. I'm sure you know them perfectly well, but let me underline some of them. The increase of the income per capita, which we have already commented on, talking about the middle classes. The democratization of traveling, more holidays, and more spread all, th all uh, through the year. New socio-demographic markets, millennials, generation set, golden age, among others. Competition and quality of new and very attractive tourist destinations. Now, everybody on the planet has become a competence in tourist destinations. Let me call your attention now to one aspect we consider very, very relevant, urban tourism. We all know that the urban population has increased in the entire world and we are also aware of its continuous growth. According to United Nations, the second and third decades of the 21st century will see an irreversible and historically <coughs> unprecedented phenomenon. Half of the world's population currently lives in cities, and this will grow to 60% by 2030 and by 70% in 2015. In Europe, according to Eurostat, three quarters of the population already lives in metropolitan, er metropolitan areas. Cities are the main economic areas of the future, where innovation, economic investment, and growth will take place. 
According to the European Cities Marketing Benchmark Report, in Europe, international pet nights in cities increased by average, by average 16% between 2011 and 2015. Whilst in the 27 U European nations, bed nights increased by average 10%. It means at least five points of difference between, between the growth in cities and the growth in nations in Europe. In short, urban tourism continues to be the driving force in tourism in Europe, and I suppose in all urban areas worldwide, not only in Europe. This is a very important slide. Changes in demand. All these changes are modifying the behavior and consumption patterns in our destinations, and all of them will, will have big consequences on the industry. Let me give you a small example. There are some cities in Europe that are considering closing some of their tourist information offices. Why? Because people, especially young people, are not using the offices anymore. They use the computer, they use their mobile. Why to go to a tourist offices? All in all, changes in the tourist industry are deep and big. Everything is changing. The demand, the supply, the distribution channels, the industry itself. And that means that DMOs, destination marketing organizations, have to constantly update their strategies and renew their messages. One important aspect to consider is the, re the role of DMOs concerning marketing contents. Today, there are thousands of agents in our, in our destinations that, that carry out marketing contents. Is this the role of DMOs to create content? Or is the objective to organize and prioritize the content created by others? I think that there is not just one answer. It depends on the characteristics of every single destination but the questions need to be answered. Allow me now to talk about the basis of marketing. We are talking about the convenience and necessity of having a new marketing strategy, more sophisticated, more accurate, using new tools. But what is basic is to have a new marketing strategy for destinations. And despite being too basic, it's necessary to remember that the items that appear on the screen are fundamental to adopt a long-term vision, to set your goals, to select priority markets, to define a narrative and plan strategically. Some years ago, it was enough to have a strategic and marketing plan for the destinations of two to 10 years validity, but now, we need constantly update our strategies and reformulate our narrative. Let's move now to talk a little bit about Barcelona and the Barcelona Tourist Board. And let me also show some of the most relevant figures on the of the tourist activity of the city. As you can see in the screen, the number of tourists has experimented an increase from 1.7 million tourists in 1990 to 9.1 million in 2016. And the bed nights figures have grown in the same period from 3.8 to 19.2 million, which represents an increase of over 400%. And we are just talking about the hotel's accommodation. From the supply side, you can see the increase of hotel bed capacity from 8,000 beds in 1919 to 67,000 in 2016, which represents an increase of 360%. Considering the origin of our tourists, our main market is the domestic one, one-fifth, but the international share is very big, nearly 80% of the total. 
What is very interesting from a marketing perspective is that we manage a well-balanced portfolio. We have five main markets, United Kingdom, United States, France, Italy, and Germany, with a market share between six and 9% each. From an internal point of view, Turismo de Barcelona is a public-private company, which was created by the Barcelona Municipality and the Chamber of Commerce in 1993, one year after Barcelona's Summer Olympic Games. Our objectives and activities are based on a, on a segmented marketing strategy by what we call the programs. It's to say, associations of specialized companies created on, on a voluntary basis, and they work on a specific market segment. We have 11 programs with almost 1,500 1, members who pay an annual fee to our office, to Turismo de Barcelona. Finally, Turismo de Barcelona is a public-private organization, but we are business-oriented. You can see in the slide that the annual budget of Turismo de Barcelona is about six, 65 million euros. But the most relevant characteristic is that 90% of the total budget are own resources that come from our commercial activities. In short, we get resources from the municipality, public grants, we also receive money from the municipal pet tax, but the major part of the budget come, comes from selling our products and services. Coming back to the marketing strategy and action plan, it's very important to count on good market data. To have the right picture of the tourist demand and of our clients, over a period of year, we regularly carry out several market research. One of the main studies we produce is the Tourist Annual Survey, that you can, you can watch it on, on the internet on our website, with over 6,000 personal questionnaires. The outputs are the profile of the tourists, preferences, origin, consumption, consumption patterns, and so on. This is fundamental marketing tool for us. I have to say that we spend a lot of money in research and knowledge. One of the findings is the assessment of tourists of the city that you can see in the screen. The, of course, this is absolutely necessary and very important to know, because otherwise you have not the right information in order to, to organize your strategy, your, your marketing strategy. To define your marketing goals and strategies, it's also very important to know how you are perceived by the market. In our case, some of our attributes are those which you can see on the screen. The objective, of course, is try to optimize the positive ones and minimize the negative ones. It's also very important to know how you are perceived, but also how you are not perceived, but you want to be. The gap between the perception and your objectives is what your marketing strategy and actions must focus on. We are at the end of my, my talk, my speech, but I, I would like to have five more minutes, Mr. Moderator, I hope I have four my minutes, good, to finalize because I have fear, okay, with, uh, and I want to, just to underline six, um, I would say, big challenges that all the destinations we have, and especially the DMOs, the uh, Destination Marketing Association. Challenge number one, the real uh, city. Tourists don't know about administrative borders. They, are, they, we, want to experience the destinations as a whole. The tourist real city is much more the city itself. When you visit Disneyland Paris, you don't mind if Disneyland Paris is in Paris or not in the village. You just consider Disneyland Paris as a, as a product of Paris. The same you can say with the Dali Museum in, in our country. You, you, maybe you, could, you see this is in Barcelona, and it is, it is in Barcelona. It's only one hour from Barcelona. 
If we agree on that, it makes sense to manage the destinations as a whole. The collaboration or even the fusion, the merging of the tourist board makes sense. We have, we have a challenge in collaborating to promote the destinations, to prioritizing the products and services to be offered, to managing the, destina the, tr the destination, transport and mobility, safety, new technological platforms. Please allow me to give you an example of Barcelona, my hometown. Turismo de Barcelona, the local DIMIO, together with the province tourist board, decided to merge our conventions bureau. Since 1st January 2017, there is only one convention bureau. Now, under the umbrella of the brand Barcelona, we are all set the venues, hotels, rooms of the region, and not only of the city. Challenge number two, governance. The positioning of cities and their branding need an integrated municipal management. There are many sectors and activities which contribute to the positioning of the city. Culture, investment facilities, capacity for hosting congresses, convention and major events, tourist attractions. All these require an adequate coordination organization in order to be efficient. In this framework, tourist offices need to rethink their governance model and a structure. Until now, DMO, DMOs, at least in Europe, have focused their objective strategy and action plans on promoting tourist activity on commercializing products and services. But in some cities, frequently the most important ones, there is a need to extend the objectives and the mission of the DMOs. In other words, there is a trend to move from destination marketing organizations to destination marketing and management organizations. In addition to this, there is a big and increasing concern in European destinations in managing tourism in an integrated way. Traditionally, it is said that the tourist boards and the convention bureaus are the organizations that promote the destination, but in fact, the promotion of destination is managed by private companies and a significant number of players, port and airport authorities, big tourist attractions, museums and foundations, trade fairs and exhibition centers. One of the big challenges for city and destinations is not only work together, but to define common goals, to share the same strategy and unify action plans. Challenge number three, citizens and tourists, crowd, crowd management. Depending on the number of visitors, some areas or hotspots are or could be overcrowded. And in some moments, it could cause problems for local citizens. Big cities like Prague, Rome, Bruges, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Berlin, but Hong Kong, Kyoto, and some small medium-sized destinations in the United States at, uh, like Savannah, Asheville, Sonoma, and many others are examples of destinations in need of adequate crowd management. Tourism is a tsunami. As we have said, WTO forecast 1.8 billion international travelers worldwide in 2013. Now they, there are, as you know, 1.2 billion. It represents a growth, I have said already, about 50% in 13 years. I don't know how many tourists and bed nights you have in destinations, but I can imagine, can you imagine an increase of 50% in your city? Can we handle that? The number of tourists visiting cities, and especially their most popular areas and tourist attractions, is increasing drastically. Life in cities will change accordingly and the perception of citizens of massive tourist activity will change. A special relevance here has mobility. In some areas of the cities, especially in city centers and hotspots, the management of both tourist and traffic flows is a must. Mobility causes problems and annoying situations for residents. 
digital economy, the number fourth. This is, again, one of the big challenges for our cities. Digital economy, it's an Im it impact on the commercialization of tourist products and services. In other, in other words, what some people call collaborative economy, P2P platforms, or again, perhaps shadow economy. The legal fram framework of, and the way of doing business in Europe are quite different from the situation in the Americas or in Asia. In fact, the digital economy means that in some, city, in some cities, collaborative economy companies are not allowed to operate or are fine if they do not respect the, lo the local regulations. Now, there is a big controversy. Some platforms are forbidden, others not, but have legal problems to operate because they are not transparent and fair enough or because they promote and commercialize illegal company. Okay, let's see what happens with that. But anyway, this is a big, big challenge. The number fifth we are finalizing, knowledge and market intelligence. Changes in the tourism industry, the demand in technologies are so deep and go so fast that we need to know how much more about the new situation. We need to acquire more and more adequate knowledge. We need to invest more time and energy on research. In addition, we are convinced that the, we need to collaborate with private, with private and public organizations and join forces. We also need to establish permanent alliance with big operators to exchange information, tools and knowledge. Finally, the collaboration of cities is important. We are competitors, but we need to work together. This is why we think that organizations like WTCF, European Cities Marketing, or Destinations International in the States are very, very important. And last but not least, I would like to underline again the challenge of um, the DMOs and DMMOs is, the, is, the, is to say the idea of changing the mind of our organizations to prioritize what's the really important things that we have to manage and not only to consider our marketing organizations, organizations as marketing ones, but also as management organizations. Okay, this is the final of my speech, uh, city tourist and city marketing organizations are complex. And we are moving from an exclusive promotional purpose to a new dimension. We don't know exactly now the final destination yet, but in any case, it will be a place that will involve more than simply promotion. You can find most of, the, of these reflections on this, uh, on this report you, you have on the right part of the screen. Is the the future of the DMOs, the ECM manifesto, the European Cities Manifesto. It's at your disposal in the website of uh, ECM. And finally, just for to have a glimpse of Barcelona, I would like now to show us a short video of one minute about Barcelona. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>